When a puppeteer lies, his nose grows longer, and it can only ask a woodpecker to help him bite it off. In a remote town, there is a poor old carpenter who goes to a restaurant to repair tables and chairs for the owner in exchange for money. However, the tables and chairs were in good condition and did not need repair. The owner gave the old carpenter something to eat and hoped he would stop making trouble. A puppet troop comes to town, and the old carpenter looks at the different puppets in the wagon and thinks about carving a perfect puppet. Another carpenter in town was working at home when a piece of wood unexpectedly moved in a strange way. The carpenter was frightened. The old carpenter came to visit, hoping to ask the carpenter for a piece of wood. The carpenter immediately gave the piece of wood to the old carpenter. The old carpenter happily returned home, took his tools and began to carve the wood. Halfway through the carving, the old carpenter discovered that the puppet actually had a heartbeat. So he began to talk to the puppet, and the puppet cried out for his father. But the old carpenter was shocked. But soon his shock turned to joy, and he continued to carve the puppet, and named it Pinocchio. From now on, the lonely old carpenter will have a puppet son. Pinocchio did not listen to him and ran out alone. The old carpenter could not catch up with him. At night, Pinocchio was being chased home by two sheepdogs. And his poor father, the old carpenter, is still looking for him, when suddenly a cricket appears in the house and tells Pinocchio that it must be a good boy. Pinocchio was impatient to hear it. He hit the cricket with a hammer and then fell asleep by the fire. Just then the old carpenter came back. He knocked on the door and found it locked. So he called out to Pinocchio. Pinocchio heard his father's voice and went to open the door. He found that his feet were on fire. He was frightened and called for help. The old carpenter climbed through the window to save Pinocchio. Pinocchio begged his father to fix his foot and promise never to run away again. So the old carpenter made a new pair of wooden feet for Pinocchio and planned to send Pinocchio to school. As the old carpenter had no money to buy school books, he had to mortgage his only coat for school books and then send Pinocchio to school. But the old carpenter left Pinocchio after Pinocchio sneaked out of school to go to the puppet show nearby. He had no money to buy tickets, so he sold his school books. The puppet show was very exciting. Pinocchio was fascinated by the puppet show on the stage. The actors on the stage found Pinocchio and invited him to perform on stage. The owner of the puppet show sees this unusual puppet and catches Pinocchio. In the evening, the boss rose slam by the side of the road because there is not enough firewood to burn Pinocchio. Luckily, Pinocchio kept saying that his poor father was still waiting for him to come home. He did not want to leave his father. The boss was touched by Pinocchio's filial piety. Not only did he not burn Pinocchio, but he gave him five gold coins to go home and honor his father. On his way home, Pinocchio met a fox and a cat. The fox and the cat saw Pinocchio holding five gold coins and pretended to make friends with him. They also used Pinocchio's money to eat and told Pinocchio to bury the gold coins in a magical place where the gold coins would grow. This money tree will be very useful and there will be endless gold coins. When he went to bed that night, Pinocchio really did dream about the money tree. But when he woke up, the innkeeper told him that the fox and the cat had gone, indicating that Pinocchio was going to the forest. Find them at the end. Pinocchio runs deep into the forest and encounters robbers. They were ready to hang Pinocchio and wanted to take the gold coins. Luckily, Pinocchio was saved. He was taken to a castle. In the castle there was a fairy and a snail butler. They rescued Pinocchio. The fairy asked Pinocchio a few questions. Every time Pinocchio answered a question, his nose got longer. The fairy said to Pinocchio, if you like, your nose will get longer. It is getting longer. Finally, the fairy opened the window and called many woodpeckers. The woodpeckers rushed forward and nibbled Pinocchio's nose back to its original shape. The fairy sent Pinocchio out of the castle and told him to return to his father. On his way back, he met the fox and the cat again. The fox and the cat said they would take him to Fairyland to plant gold coins. Pinocchio buried the gold coins, and they told Pinocchio to go far away to fetch water. When Pinocchio returned from fetching water, he found that the fox and the cat had disappeared. The gold coins buried in the ground were gone, and he realized that he had been cheated. When Pinocchio got home, a neighbor told him that his father had gone to the beach to look for him. Pinocchio rushes to the beach and is swept away by the waves. The fairy appears again and saves him. This time the fairy makes sure that Pinocchio goes to school. At school, Pinocchio meets a bad boy and follows him to study. This bad boy encourages Pinocchio to go to the toy town with him. There are lots of bad children in toy town who don't like to read, and everyone plays like mad. The next day, 
All the children in Troy Town are turned into donkeys and Pinocchio is sold to the circus. During the circus show, Pinocchio made a mistake and hurt his leg. The circus owner throws Pinocchio into the sea. The fairy called a group of fish to save him, and Pinocchio returned to his human form. He swam around the sea looking for his father. Suddenly a huge shark appeared and swallowed him whole. Pinocchio finally found his father. Pinocchio decided to take his father away from here. So they escaped while the shark slept with its mouth open. They swim to shore and find a broken house, ready to live in again. But dad is too weak. Pinocchio goes to work for a nearby farmer in exchange for milk. Pinocchio works every day, and now he does everything, by earning a salary to look after his aging father. The fairy is finally touched by Pinocchio's filial piety and turns him into a real little boy.